Okay, welcome back to my solar panel installation, 6 kilowatt. As you can see, there's the roof top isolator switch, uh, which is proper DC uh, high voltage rated switch uh, for that purpose, where you have to switch both the positive and the negative of each series, each string rather. Um, <clears throat> coming out from underneath the roof is the medium density conduit which you have to, have to use, which I've kept off the, the metal roof by holding them up with these little clamps here, uh, keeping, all, keeping away from all moisture, so yeah, gluing up all the fittings obviously. Um, it's got at least double earth, earthing out the roof and the panels. Um, yeah, so inside the roof, going inside the roof, that's got to be high density. In, in Australian re regulations, the orange conduit all the way through and marked solar every less than two metres, warning labels, uh, and coming down into medium density again back to the switchboard on the outside of the house. Um, what else? The, this is a custom install, so it did take a while, to be honest. The, each of the mounting brackets was just angle iron, um, which has been a little 90 degree angle cut and then bent at the bottom, as you can see. And the top part had to be cut as well, that one section of it, so you could slip a straight, a straight piece straight up between the panels. And... Uh, bolt them up that way so you can see a bolt yeah uh, it did take a while um, I don't recommend using angle iron for this in the future I would never do it again it rusts far too easily uh, a bit hard to cut and just takes too long basically it's over a bit of an overkill I would use anodized aluminium in the future um, yeah, and use a hacksaw, hacksaw electric hacksaw to cut it up do what you need with it. Um, the diamond tipped circular blade in the uh, gets clogged up when you're cutting aluminium so that probably wouldn't work so good. And yeah so I did have some DC inline fuses just here from China and within five minutes it burnt out so completely useless waste of time those Chinese rubbish um, not recommended unless you get good quality stuff so yeah um, okay so I'll show you down at the switch box this is the extension I had to make which is a little bit of work cut up some old bed frames worked perfectly two bed frames was just enough with a little bit extra so could Go over this little tin roof, aluminium roof actually. Yeah, and I bolted it up with um, high tensile bolts, just to be sure. Okay, back at the switchboard and the inverter. What's it doing? Pumping out three and a half kilowatts. It's 11 o'clock. That's okay. In case you didn't notice, six kilo, this is a 5 kilowatt inverter. Um, I've overrated it to 6 kilowatt, which is fine. Just means this thing will work a little bit harder during the middle of the day uh, and have a higher output for a longer period. It's still fine because it won't, it won't blow anything up. It's limited to 5 kilowatts. So, as you can see, come down through the roof. This is a specialized DC circuit breaker. Red for DC voltage, high voltage. It's got four circuits, four poles connected together. Um, it's actually on at the moment, red means on. So it's four, I've got two tw twin four mil uh, solar cable plus four mil earth, which you have to have in Australia, going up onto the earthing at the roof, all the solar panels. And coming into the, as you can see, there's two, two strings here, two parallel 
positive negative polarity is negative. Got the Tyco connector right there. I'll just have to cover that up with some tape or something. Um, yep, going into the switchboard. That's. I put a 25 amp circuit breaker. Actually made these warning labels myself on the color printer and laminator, as well as that one. And. And you can see the accumulation meter turning backwards temporarily. Uh, legally, requirements in Australia is we have to install either a gross meter or a net meter, which is a bit of a pain because we have to pay at least 22 cents a kilowatt, and they only want to pay us six cents a kilowatt for grid fed of our own electricity into their grid. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a nuisance. Um, so at least um, these four poles of this DC circuit breaker has both the positive and the negative switch for each string, um, and it's fully rated for the a high, a much higher voltage than what we're using, which is basically 400 volts. Um, Yeah, so two lots of parallel 400 volts. Um, it's getting a little bit overcast at the moment, so it's just dropping off temporarily. So there's 240 volts, 50 hertz. 400 volts at the bus, PV has dropped down to about 3, what was it, 30 or something volts, something like that. Yeah, so that's the system. It's a second-hand uh, inverter, 5 kilowatts, it's working fine. Uh, made by Sun Teams, which is now owned by KLNE. Uh, they went bankrupt, started a new company because these inverters supposedly didn't last very long. And got too many warranty claims. Uh, but anyway, this one's so far so good. I may install a temperature-sensitive fan that cools the heatsink. This does get a little bit hot the back there uh, for around one hour, one hour and a half at midday when it's pumping out about full, pretty much the five, full five kilowatts of power. So yeah. Alrighty, so that's it. Um, anything else uh, you can send us a message. Cheers. Okay, just one thing. Uh, this is the app I used to work out the solar panel angle to install the mat which is I used about 34 degrees um, on my lines for in Australia and the compass measurement app uh, you have to be careful not being around metal otherwise it throws the measurement out uh, maybe 30 or 40 degrees as you can see when I stand closer to this metal pole it changes the true north position um, you can change it from magnetic north to true north instead and run it that way but don't be on or around metal as it will throw it out. And finally, the uh, cost breakdown if you're interested. Okay, cheers.